I can't even, I can't even read the comments. Hey folks, uh, Lester and Jamie here, and we are coming to you on a Sunday afternoon. Today's October the 9th, and uh, we are here at Longhorn Lester's. We're in our live shack, not the love shack. It's the live shack. This is the uh, little camper that we got from Jason and Brooke, Mary Carl over at Cog Hill. And we set it up here at Longhorn Lester's to give us a place to hang out and cool off when we're out and about working. Um, I uh, was going to wait a couple of seconds until Facebook can join in. You know, whenever you use the uh, stream yard, you uh, set it up through Facebook, which is crazy, but it will connect to YouTube. YouTube kind of lets you have like a waiting room. Yeah, like, yeah. You YouTube know? gives you a waiting room. And then Facebook, even though you're using them to set it all up, they're the last ones who get notified that, hey, I'm the survivors going live. Yeah. And so we uh, try to give a couple of seconds here to, uh, because, you know, a lot of folks, you can always go back and watch the rewind later, but it's normal. You want to catch it when it first comes out. And so we're going to uh, a, attempt to avoid reading the comments because. I actually wish there was a way that I could hide them, to be honest. You guys have a way of finding your way into our. So let me just first of all start off and say that when we lost Journey, you know, Journey was our little goat who we all love so much, who was just such an amazing little girl. But uh, the day that we were going to go live, I, I doped myself up. I'm just going to say it. I doped myself up. I took my antidepressants. I took the anxiety pills. I doped myself up because I did not want to make a fool of myself on a uh, live where we were going to talk about someone who we cared about you know so much and so today i go grab all my dope and she told me no she says don't and i said i don't want to make a fool of myself jamie i do not want to get on here i want to talk about maggie and not make a fool of myself and then she said that um i said that you need to feel you need to, you, you have to go through this, like, otherwise it'll always, it'll always, like, be building up, and then it'll come out at the worst time, in the worst way. I found a, um, a time to mourn Journey, and uh, it wasn't during the live. I remember I, later... When I went back and watched the live, I was just spacey. I remember I was spacey. I was just like spaced out. You and Ellie were having your moments, and I'm just yeah. like spaced out. Probably one of my best lives ever, to be <laughs> honest. It was probably one of my best lives of all time. I was just spaced out and didn't know what I was saying and just went with the flow. But uh, today, I, I, I told myself I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it. And... Um, Oh, don't think that I have already got a my cap on so I can always do this and just kind of dip and duck my way out of it. The way all men do. You know, we're men. We just do that. But uh, <clears throat> I, I will say, and for those who have, have not already heard, yesterday was we were all caught off guard. So off guard. When we were all, uh, it was me, Jamie, and Ellie, and we were all sitting in the living room, and it had struck that 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 golden hour, time to go out and feed up. And uh, Jamie normally goes out first, and she starts all of the watering. And as she starts out the door, Ritzy and Maggie jump up to go with her. We uh, Jamie opens the sliding glass door. Maggie and Ritzy bop outside. And all of a sudden, right there at the door, 
before Jamie could even close it, Maggie just stopped dead in her tracks and she just fell right over. And uh, we I were. I thought that she tripped, and uh, or or <sighs> just it was just a very strange thing. And then I really quickly realized what was going on and and um, opened the door and yelled for Lester and. Uh, we we you you know you didn't know maggie we, we thought was just very healthy and strong and just an active go-getter she jumped up to go you know do her part and maggie played a very important role around there especially when it came time to doing anything with the animals because maggie felt and she performed to her role every morning every afternoon she loved to go over here to come with us to longhorn lester's because she thought she also had a role to play here as well and that uh she never thought fiona and millie were going to cut it she never knew they were she never thought they would cut it and they will probably never live up to what maggie did for us but maggie is the um reason that a lot of us have found each other Maggie is the reason that a lot of us have been able to kind of work through some tough times. And I would say more than any other animal, more than any of us, Maggie was the staple that was in every single video. She was always there doing her job and she never had any kind of formal training. She'd never been to any kind of obedience school. But she was so smart that she could just watch what what daddy wanted her to do or what daddy was doing and then she would do it she did it up until the second that she died and i think that's that's one of the hardest things for me is i keep replaying it i've gone back to all of our cameras yesterday our security cameras to look to see what could i have missed what how how could she be fine the whole day the whole day and be right at my heels and and right behind him doing all the chores that we had to do yesterday handle everything and, and it's not like we're out here like like in 100 degree heat or anything like that it was this typical saturday chore list and we were all inside cooling off you know taking the afternoon to just relax a little bit before we go outside and she's laying in her normal spot and she looks at me three different times in the, you know, 20 minutes before I go outside, she picks her head up and looks at me like, is it time? Are we going? Are we going? Maggie had an internal clock. I want to, uh, well, and I, I'll go ahead and say this and if you'll have to give us time, my friends, we, we, um, obviously we have years and years and years of, video and pictures of our sweet maggie that we would love to it'll be therapeutic for us to take some time and to compile all of that to a to a for a video for you all and share with you all some of the joys that we got from maggie but i just will i would um i will just um i just want to tell you like um a couple of things that you probably didn't know about Maggie because some things you don't video and one of those things that you don't video is that me and probably like most men we uh probably deal with a little bit of sleep apnea here and there and so Maggie every night would sleep on my side of the bed not on the bed oh she used to she used to sleep with me until I kicked her out. <laughs> there was just no room in the queen size bed. And she's a big dog. And when we first got together, I was like, okay, th this is Dogs great. gotta go. But could she, could we get her our own bed? And so we put a, a rug on each side of our bed. We have a little, a runner rug, you know, those little runner rugs that you can have. And Maggie would sleep right there on my side of the bed every night. And Jamie always thought it was neat that um sometimes whenever i would be sleeping and i would just stop breathing like i would like die maggie was was always listening and here it could be any 
time of the night. Um, and I could be on the couch, I could be in the bed, but if whenever I stopped breathing, Maggie would jump up and she would run and she would start to nuzzle. She would just nuzzle. And uh, she'd wake me up. She'd wake me up and I'd start breathing again. And I'm like, what do you want, Maggie? Sheesh, leave me alone, Maggie. I'm trying to sleep here. And Jamie's like, Maggie just saved your life. Maggie just saved your life. And Maggie would do that all the time. And sometimes, many times throughout the night. But um, what's cute, not that, that I guess that's not really cute. But what's funny is that even though Maggie would have to stay on my side of the bed to keep me breathing, um, every morning when Maggie had to go out and TT, she would let me sleep. Yeah. She would get up and allow me to sleep and walk around Jamie's side of the bed to wake Jamie up to go let her out. So that I could enjoy my rest. <laughs> Lester could literally have come in because you know he's on the porch. He could have come in five minutes ago, and she's gonna you know, wait for him to lay back down and then to wake me up to let her outside. Which I never, never was frustrated with or anything. It was, it's a funny thing at my house. Like it's just like the rest of kids. Like Dad could be standing right there, but they're gonna ask Mom, and that's what Maggie did. And yeah. It didn't happen today, of course, and just pretty empty. Everything feels a little bit more empty um, because, like I say, Maggie loved doing chores, and Maggie had an internal clock, and I don't know if she could just tell by the sounds that maybe the animals were up and about and they were starting to wake up and do their thing. But Maggie knew when it was time to wake up and getting over there and shaking Jamie to get her up was pretty much Jamie would go ahead. And once Jamie was up, she wouldn't go back to bed. She'd go start the coffee and uh, put on her face and do whatever all the girls, you know, you ladies do. And then she'd come get me up. But uh, Maggie, man, she couldn't wait. She would just be her little her little nub, her little tail nub would just be moving and shaking and she'd be ready to go outside and you know you just took it for granted how much she enjoyed that and down the steps we'd go and we'd just go through and do all of our chores and if i had to get on the side by side and go someplace she was right there with me um she led the way her and ritzy well even when we had sookie you know her and trixie she's always been good to all of the babies when we bring Maggie over here to Longhorn Lester, she's always been good to Fiona and Millie. Oh, she lets them know that she's top dog. Don't get me wrong, but she's she's an excellent caretaker to every animal that we've had and every person. And um, it's so funny because she had a fierce bark. And any delivery person or person that came over to help with a job or something like that, like they she would bark like crazy until... They knew her name and then her little nub would go 100 miles an hour and she would try to like sit on their feet and not let them move from petting her and she just for as much as maggie loved living you know the country life she would she would jump in the car with the male lady she'd jump in the car with anybody <laughs> and you know i never in the in the entire life span of Maggie, I never had to lay a hand on her with a swat or a spanky stick. You might have threatened it a few times. Oh, I threatened it. But the funny thing is, if I would ever get on to Maggie, if I would ever scold her, sometimes she would lay down like I'm about to beat her. And if uh, she was ever like jumping on company or jump, you know, sometimes whenever she loved kids. So whenever we would have company come over or family come over. Maggie would start jumping on the kids and I would get on to her and she would just like well, freak then, out. Then and I was like, I ne I've never laid a hand on her, but I tell you what, sometimes she would make it look like I'm like the world's worst man, worst human. And that made me want to spank her. <laughs> that made me want to spank her. The worst part was is whenever you would put her in the house because we were trying to do something with an animal and it was dangerous. So she would be trying to protect us and barking or whatnot. So you go put her in the house. She taught herself how to open the door. Maggie could open the door. The sliding door and the screen door. Yeah, the sliding door. She could put her little nose, her little nuzzle up or to it. Or her little claw in there just to be able to get and her nose in. Once she could, 
work it, she would start moving her head in. And next thing you know, she'd wiggle the entire door open. And I can't tell you how many times we had come up to Longhorn Lester's and we left Maggie back at the house. And when we got back home, the door would be open. Maggie would be in or out. Pablo would be in. And there Maggie was, would no. just have, Maggie would let everybody in. She'd let the cats in, let the cats out. Maggie could run. I'm a survivor. As a matter of fact, Maggie probably could run I'm a Survivor better than anyone else could. And um, Maggie was just a really sweet girl. I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about what happened yesterday. And um, I shared a little snippet of, you know, we have our security camera set up. And I shared the, the, those moments with the uh, Facebook supporters. We um, also just, I, 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 I just want to tell you exactly what happened, but I don't know. But what I'll say is that when Maggie got up and walked out the door and she collapsed right there, Jamie thought at first it might be a seizure, but there wasn't really any kind of seizing. It was just she fell completely over. Because <clears throat> I just never imagined what else. Caught, you know, she fell over and her legs kind of went a little stiff at first, but it was it wasn't a seizure. And then um, I could I I don't know exactly what was happening, but I know Jamie got her phone out and began to try to get a hold of our our vet. And of course, it was Saturday afternoon, so there were no vet clinics open. And then uh, we begin to give Maggie CPR immediately, and uh, we got her to take about three you okay yeah sorry we we gave maggie we begin to give her cpr immediately and we got her to pop back two three times but all three times it was just just for a second or so and then she would just go again and then we would resuscitate and resuscitate and resuscitate and then finally she um she just, we couldn't get her to wake up again. We couldn't get her to come back. And so Ellie was there with us. And so once we, um, we realized that Maggie was gone, then we took her to the Morrow Family Cemetery. And um, we buried her there amongst my grandparents and my Uncle Riley. Because that's how special Maggie was, not just to us. And I will say this, and this is not going to come out right, because I know that there's folks who love animals. And I know you've all attached to different animals, and you have your favorites. And But Maggie was more than just one of the other babies, y'all. She was more than just one of the other babies. And for everybody who's had... I think I... Jamie, if this is not the damnedest thing, but I think that I talked about this about a month ago about how some animals are just such a big part of your life and that um, Maggie is one of them that was just so much more and uh, the thing is and I know this isn't going to come out wrong but you know you can already kind of tell that you know that you're going to lose your babies over time you're going to lose them you know Ringo Mr. Huck you know, even when we lost Journey, these were, these are, they're no like surprises. Yes, it's a shocker that they're actually gone. They've been a big part of your life for so long. You hate to lose any of them, but uh, you sort of, for most accounts, you can kind of see when an animal's on its demise, when it's not in its best of health. And I think that we kind of mentally prepare ourselves for the, for the day you wake up up and walk out and you've lost one of your babies but uh, there was nothing that ever made us think that we wouldn't have Maggie around forever and forever and so that was such a huge shock and so it caught us all off guard but uh, Maggie is lying lying there in our Morrow family cemetery she has a sweet little spot and we'll make sure that we find some time to make some cute video and show you guys how we did everything up for her 
And of course, like I said, we will eventually build a, a, a tribute, so, something that's fitting to Maggie, because I don't know exactly how you guys found the page. Talk if I'm you want sorry, to. I can't. Sorry. But uh, Run Maggie Run was the one where a lot of folks met Maggie whenever Annie, our alpaca, got after her. But did has anyone noticed that over the last couple of months, Annie and Maggie get along just great. Even, Maggie can even go with Indy around. Maggie can go anywhere on that property, and everyone accepts her as one of them. They, 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 you know, there's no more anything between them, which is just beautiful. And um, what am I, my, my mind is just like a blank. It's just, my mind is just blank. I don't know what to say. I want to find something to say to a lot of people are asking if we're going to find out the the cause of her death or not. No. No, I never want to have any of my animals cut open like that. Maggie's gone, y'all. Maggie's just gone. And uh, Maggie will live on. And they're, uh, I mean, Maggie has survived snake bite. Maggie has survived being eaten up by hornets. That happened over here. Maggie has survived. Sheesh, Maggie has survived a lot of stuff. Being chased by <laughs> ostriches and donkeys. Being chased by donkeys. Being chased by an alpaca. Random neighborhood dogs. Like, uh, you know, when when Suki and Ritzy first came down, and Maggie greeted them, I I didn't know how it was gonna go because while Maggie can be loving and accepting, she's also very protective of what's hers. And in the beginning, she, they were allowed to be around, but they had rules to follow and whatnot. And I just didn't know how that would go until a neighborhood dog came up one day. And um, it was Suki and Ritzy who were in the middle of it with this neighborhood dog. And Maggie comes storming out the door that she let herself out of and ran that dog off, protecting, the, you know, her two new friends. And I don't know, she's special. And She's special in a way that is so unexplainable because there's a lot of things that I, I know that she was your dog, but I spent so much time with her. And if you weren't doing with her, she was doing it with me. And I don't know, just a, a big part of your, your every day of when we would come home from something, she'd be sitting in the driveway waiting for us, like, hurry up. I have something to show you. And, um, just our morning routine to, to the evenings of her facial expressions and the way that she communicated with her face. And it just, she was really special. I know that, um, uh, there, you know, you guys know that we record videos and we don't always play them the same day they're recorded. So you'll have to understand that through the next week or so, as we have videos that have already been made that will scheduled to to play uh, you will see maggie in some of those videos so don't let it confuse you and if there's someone who is not sure what's going on then thank you for helping us explain to them that we lost our sweet maggie yesterday saturday uh, on the i would say what around 6 p.m or so 5 yeah, 30 6 p.m and we're going to miss her we're A going lot. to miss her she was a um, an icon of the sanctuary of our family, of our life. Maggie was my my best of friends. I um I had Maggie before I had Jamie. I had Maggie before I had Jamie, and Maggie was right there along with us as we were rebuilding our farm as we begin to bring in new animals maggie was just so loving and accepting of all of them she had her favorites maggie had her favorite animals to pick on to play with she loved to wrestle she loved to taunt and tease cornholio she also saved a lot of us from the geese she would put herself between the geese and us. Whenever the geese got into little rowdy moods, Maggie would run right in and allow herself to be bitten to a, 
to help us not get bitten. And um, you're a good girl. I hope that everybody has a chance to have a Maggie of your own. What I know, and um, I will say through, you know, the 50 years that I've been on this earth, you don't get many Maggies. You have a lot of dogs, you have a lot of cats, you have a lot of pets, but you don't get many as good as Maggie. And so I hope that um, you all at some point have yourself a Maggie or you can think back to you remember your Maggie and they there's something special and they they really can be something that can keep you going when you don't always feel like going. They can will keep you to wake they can wake you up when you stop breathing at night. <laughs> and um, we're never going to forget Maggie. So y'all give us a couple of days to put together something fitting to uh memorialize her by and um thank you for loving her and for allowing her to be a part of your day and your lives as well